I remember one of the comments that came through when I shared um, a recipe on how to make corn dough, which is a similar process to this, was the fact that you need muscles. <laughs> Someone commented that you need a muscle to be able to do this job. I think the person is right. Anyway, my name is Sianoki. Thank you so much for joining me. So in my previous video, I shared how you can make kinky with miledu. And it's just important for me to demonstrate how I achieved or how I got this miledu. Because it's quite strange. You, you, you can't find miledu on a local market. You can find cassava and condo, but no miledu. And one thing you need to watch out for beautiful people when buying millet on our local market is to check for stones, okay? Go to a source where you would not have to do a lot of work. On this day, I went to my trusted source and the woman actually, when I went, they were cleaning it, yeah? And she told me that after they sieve it and everything, she actually washes her millet before selling to her customers. But I needed mine, so I got mine. So you can see there's a lot of dirt in this, okay? I honestly didn't expect this to be that dirty else i'd have waited them for the, for them to clean it before going back to buy it anyway make sure you are soaking this overnight or you can actually soak this in the morning yeah, let's take like um, a day you soak this in the morning and evening around 5 p.m you go and mail it i'm saying 5 p.m because in Ghana after 6 p.m you are not allowed to mail okay so note that now i inserted this clay in this clip to just demonstrate to you how i wash it you have to wash it until it's clean i mean i had to put the device away and wash this dirty corn <laughs> and then usually when you soak it and the grains become lighter and the stones become heavier so they settle at the bottom you have to take your time to gently take the 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 millet of the stones however as I said, if you buy from a trusted source, you wouldn't have to go through all this wahala. <laughs> so after cleaning it nicely, I take it to my commercial meal um, and then mail this. Okay, if you are not in Ghana, um, I don't know. I think there are some places that they sell millet flour. You can just get your millet flour and go through this process. And one thing that I've done differently from this um recipe is the fact that i did not add any local spice all my um, millet recipes i shared i added some local spices to be like ginger pepper and all the local spices to get the hausa kuku feel but this particular one i didn't do that because i had an agenda i knew i wanted to use this for kinke for banku and other things that didn't really um, need some spice in there so that is basically the difference so when i bring it from the commercial meal usually when you take your stuff to the commercial meal and you get a meal it is very hot please when you come let it cool completely it is very important that you let this cool completely before you go through this process process of using water bit by bit and making dough from the millets and while you are you are doing this you are sort of pressing your hand crushing all the all the millets that were sort of clamped up together this files will not let me be guys <laughs> that, were, that were clamped up together yeah so bit by bit pressing your hand crushing them you know sometimes when we get the millet of the water we have some of the liquid in it so when they mill it it does not come out like you know like a pure flour no i mean like a smooth flour okay it has a bit of lumps um you know in there so you have to be using your hand to crush it to crush this okay just just to um achieve a very smooth and nice consistency and yes this is where you need um the muscle work as the subscriber said you just need to exercise your muscles some more with this <laughs> so you do it gradually bit by bit okay just so as not to put a lot of stress on yourself just do it bit by bit and that way you're able to measure the water okay if you just pour the water inside you may you may end up <laughs> i don't know how to describe it um yeah so just do it bit by bit okay so once you are done mixing doing a bit by bit putting everything together um uh, what you do next is to press your hand on the dough okay
So you want to um, achieve a very smooth surface, okay? So just press your hand on it, cover every space. You don't want any space in there. And then once you are done, you cover it with a plastic rubber to avoid all the fungi and stuff from coming on top of it, okay? Traditionally, what I've been thought, Whenever we make our dough, we keep it for three days. We let it ferment for three days before using it. But again, from a subscriber's um, suggestion, even the next day after doing this, you can have it. And that is absolutely true. Uh -huh. Because I'll be bagging this into my freezer, I waited for three days. Okay, so it's not compulsory. And then after that, I bag them into this plastics and it will be in my freezer as long as it stays frozen. This is going to be safe for a very, very long time. If you want to make hausa cocoa or spicy uh, millet porridge with this, all you have to do is to add your ginger, your pepper, and your local spices to this, and you are good to go. However, I like to make things easier for myself. I like to suffer once and then enjoy. <laughs> so these are some peppers, um, some calabash nutmeg, cloves, black pepper, grains of cinnamon. If I had negro pepper, I would have added. Okay, so I'm adding that to my dry blender and my ginger. I just washed this ginger. I did not peel it at all. Peeling ginger is such a task. And I'm just fed up of these files in this neighborhood. I've paused the video a number of times, but I guess I have to just go with the noise in the background. Please forgive me. So I'm going to blend this, but when I blended this, I noticed it was too dry for my liking. So I'm adding some water to soften it up. Okay, so these are the spices that ideally, when I'm going to make my millet dough, I add before grinding them or before milling them. And what I'm coming to do is to put them in my ice cube containers. I'll cover with a cling film and put in the freezer. Alternatively, you can just wrap um, also tie them in your plastic wrappers, okay? The sizes that you would want to have, so that as soon as you take one and it thaws, you just add to your millet dough and then use it. So, once this is frozen, I'll just take it out, take everything out of the ice cube containers, and I wouldn't waste a lot of time. I'll just put it back into my plastics and keep it in my freezer. That way it will be intact. Else if it thaws, they will just be stuck together and will make it easy anytime I wanted one or two to make a dish. So as simple as that, that is how I sometimes make life easy for myself. Okay. So whenever I'm coming to make um, um, the hausa cocoa or spicy porridge, I just take one of these and add it to the millet dough. And then I'm good to go. I'll demonstrate that in another video because I wouldn't want this video um, to be too long. And on that note, I want to say thank you for watching. Thank you together with all the files in my neighborhood <laughs> for coming through. Yes, please subscribe to the channel. Bye.